So the guy was reading this on the plane, and very shortly the plane landed. It was a very short flight, and we were there getting our stuff, and uh, just about to walk down the aisle of the plane, and this guy looked like he was trying to come up with something. You know, maybe he was thinking that uh, he doesn't know what, when he'll have this chance again. You know, you can't always count on sitting next to a Zen master when you fly into Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> so, here we were at the last minute, and the guy kind of tried to get his son's name's attention, and the question he came up with was, when you die, where do you go? And the son Sanin, without looking back, said, out of the plane, into the airport. <laughs> so at the time, I didn't quite know what to make of that. <laughs> but I look at it now in the same way. Again, it's a response that is not feeding it any type of idea, but it's just pointing back to this moment, which is all we have. The man was asking a question about where he was going, and that's our only reality. Right at that moment, that's where we were going, out of the plane and into the airport. When we first got this place, uh, over a decade ago, I remember talking about Buddhism uh, with San Master Ban Song, and uh, he was saying, we don't know what the future is going to look like in Buddhism. For all we know, in a few generations, uh, Buddhism in America, it always changes when Buddhism moves to a new place. Buddhism in America may not even look like a religion anymore. It may look more like a therapy. It may look like something entirely different. Uh, because again, the outside form, the outside religion, isn't the important part. The important part is the inside religion. This practice of just returning, just connecting with our real experience just now. I remember another story. When I look at our practice, there are a lot of different techniques that we have in the tradition that are all like different ways to maybe encourage us or help us to come back to this moment, to put down whatever ideas we're holding in our head. And the main thing that I always look at as the fundamental practice is keeping a big question, always returning to a mind that's questioning. As long as we have a question, then we're not really more to an idea. And questioning is kind of you know, sweeping away our ideas so we can bring, come back to uh, a clear awareness of just now. Uh, in the temples in Korea, there are calligraphies that just say, what is this? So it doesn't matter what words you use, but just to keep a question rather than holding on to some idea. Anyway, I've only been to Korea one time, uh, six years ago? 2002. Yeah. Uh, we went, uh, every three years there's like a gathering of various schools in the Quantum School. So this was in Korea, and we were going on a, uh, a tour of various Buddhist places, and one of the places we went to was the little hut in which our founding teacher, De Sun Sanim, had at the very beginning of his practice done a hundred day retreat, a very intense chanting practice, uh, chanting the great Dharani, which is the last chant we did this morning, uh, this evening. And uh, during that retreat, he had a big mind opening, enlightenment experience. So we went up through uh, this little trail up to the little hut and we stood outside there, a few dozen of us, and uh, did the motok and did the chant. And uh, I was feeling, I was feeling kind of elevated to be at this special kind of historic place. <coughs> and then when we finished and it was quiet for a moment, a bird chirped and one of the teachers said, hear the sound of the bird, get enlightenment. So 
So that's a nice little teaching, you know, uh, if, anyone, if anyone's mind is trying to hold on to some great idea about being in a holy place or thinking about something that had happened decades ago, that was a little teaching to point right back at this moment. Whatever you're experiencing right now, that's what our practice is. And then there was another moment of silence, and the bird chirped again, and our own Zen Mestre Bansam said, Hear the sound of the bird, lose enlightenment. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the way it is. I mean, we're always letting go of some ideas but grabbing onto new ones. So a lot of people, if they start, if they start a meditation practice, they might let go of some of the uh, some of the concepts they were holding beforehand, but then grab onto some new concepts. So it's a constant. It's a constant process of just really returning to just the experience of the moment and not holding on to any sort of idea. That's ongoing, moment to moment. I think of it like painting the Golden Gate Bridge. Uh, by the time you finish painting it to the uh, north side and the south side means painting again. Uh, we practice to let go of all of our ideas, but there are new delusions that are always appearing. So over and over, we just return to the same practice of putting it all down and just return to a question. Uh, what is this? And it sounds, it can sound like a terrible thing to have a practice that never ends, but that's only if you want something. It's only a problem if you want something. If you don't want anything, then painting the Golden Gate Bridge is just moment to moment, just painting. And if you don't want anything, then uh, practice in the same way, just every moment, whatever it is, uh, just returning to the question. Thank you, everyone.